Hey, welcome to the Build It Basement. Today we're going to be talking about bulletproof plastic, specifically polycarbonate and how to print it, maybe some tips on how you can print it at home. Uh, it's not much different than ABS. Uh, there are some differences. Before I get too deep into that, I'm going to thank you guys out there for the comments. Keep leaving them. Uh, specifically, the funny ones really get me. Uh, this back here is a drop block. It is not a dirty sheet. It is covering up my uh, electrical panel and well pump because I have not built the closet back there in the basement. So I will get that cleaned up at some point. I did get your comment. I'm going to fix it up. We'll make everything look better, right? Anyways, beyond that, let's get into this. Let's get into printing polycarbonate PC, uh, a little bit about ABS as well. Uh, it's going to be a quick one. Um, so here we go. So start off. Test things for yourself. Okay, a lot of people talk about how difficult it is to print with ABS, how difficult it is to print with polycarbonate, how difficult this is, that is. And just like a lot of things in life, people tend to try to make things seem more difficult for what reason, I have no idea. Maybe it makes them feel better about themselves when they accomplish it. All things being said, um, so far, if you're willing to put a little bit of work into it, some research and some testing, I haven't found a material I haven't been able to print with on an Ender 5 not an expensive printer. I do have a um, Creality cover on that, uh, so it is kind of like having a heated chamber, but not much, no more than having a cardboard box over it, anything like that. Uh, when you're doing that, when you're doing some, um, or doing some testing, when you're doing your uh, printing and you're failing, um, you know, take some notes, figure out what's going on, what's going on, you know, are you getting delamination on your layers, are you getting warping, what's happening specifically? Um, I'll get into some cure settings in a moment, um, but basically look at what's happening and then tweak from there. Do a test print right off the bat. Take the roughest idea that you have on how to print that material and print it. Print something small. It doesn't even be big. Something pretty small, um, preferably maybe some, some overhangs. It doesn't have to be a full benchy. Something even smaller than a benchy. A test print of some sort. Just do it and see what comes out. If you like what comes out, work from there. If you don't, modify from there. Um, never say you can't print a material with your printer until you try it. Okay, that's number three. Number two, this is where you get into some cure settings real quick. So once you've kind of figured out some basics, um, obviously if you're watching this, you've probably done some printing. Uh, you want to do some ABS, maybe some polycarbonate, um, maybe you're building boron, right? Uh, any of those things, when they apply, you're going to be wanting to look at your settings in your slicer. Okay. So I'm going to show you real quick what my settings are. So, uh, well, first things first. This right here is a uh, the G code, the slice of um, the front of the air duct for a boron afterburner uh, hot end. Uh, or the, uh, the the cooling shroud, if you will. Uh, the hot end actually attaches halfway on here. Fans fire in through the front on the other side, and these are ventilation holes through here, so you get a blow directly on your molten plastic. Uh, two things I'll note here. One is yes, there is a pretty big brim on this. Um, brims can be pretty important when you're printing something that flexes a lot. Uh, that's willing to warp on you no matter what you do. I will say something else. The taller the part, the more layers you have, the more chances you have delamination or warping just because there's more pulling on it. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're not going to print yourself something that's extremely large on, on a low-end printer. But little parts, and this isn't too little really, but uh, little parts such as this in polycarbonate um, are pretty easy to do. And that part, just so we can show, is right here and it's not the prettiest print in the world you know but um, this right here is polycarbonate through and through uh, this is an ABS version a little bit nicer right um, but this is polycarbonate and the reason why I went with polycarbonate on this particular part is because of the proximity to the hot end um, melting more so than intact right but um, yeah that's what we have so get back to this. Let's look at settings real quick here in Cura. And, and this applies to any any slicer you're using. Um, it doesn't have to be Cura. It could be anything. So 
couple things to know, uh, specifically in a slicer. Uh, temperatures. So for me, uh, using some gizmo dorks, which I'll bring that over here real quick, uh, gizmo dorks, uh, polycarbonate filament from Amazon, uh, which you can have, let's see, how much is that? What are we looking at? Uh, 30 bucks. 30 bucks. So not horrible, right? Um, yeah, so 30 bucks for some polycarbonate from Gizmo Dorks from Amazon. Good stuff. Non affiliate link. I don't want nothing from you. Just let you know what I'm using. Uh, so, temperature. So, print temperature on polycarbonate is going to be pretty high. So, you're going to want a printer that can sustain a 290 plus temperature on the hot end. Uh, you're probably going to want a full metal hot end. Uh, you do not want a Bowden tube that go all the way down into that heat. Uh, the PTFE. Uh, lining or tubing that you're using in there uh, will degrade at that temperature. Uh, you might get away with doing a few prints, but over time that's going to definitely degrade. So, uh, full metal hot end, uh, something you want to look at. In terms of printing temperature, again, I'm at 293. Uh, build plate temperature. Now, this is important, and keep this in mind if you're printing. Um, if you're printing, polycarbonate or ABS, you want to have that bed nice and toasty. Um, the warmer the bed is, the less chances are that you'll have delamination on the layers that are closest to the bed and the better adhesion you'll have to the bed, meaning that the less warping you're going to have. Again, that's the reason why we have a brim. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing that is your bed. So. Normally on my Ender 3, I utilize a glass bed. So it's standard glass bed, you can buy them. Uh, it did not come with it, but uh, actually came with this guy right here. This is your standard, I don't even know what kind of plastic it is. I'm sure somebody will know, so we'll probably leave a comment about it. This is a magnetic bed, it's El Cheapo. Uh, you can see I kind of wore a little spot in there. The uh, print head was a little low. so. Uh, I don't use that at all for anything, but glass mostly for everything. If you are using glass and you are printing ABS specifically, get yourself a glue stick or some type of product that will help that product stick down. Now, this will not work with ABS. They do make a, a I mean, a polycarbonate. They do make a, uh, a type of uh, magic glue that will work with polycarbonate. I have not tried it. Um, I haven't needed to because of this quick tip. A sheet of polycarbonate. Polycarbonate sticks pretty well to itself. You can get a sheet of Lexan, it doesn't need to be very thick, at a big box hardware store or your local hardware store. Um, basically a polycarbonate sheet. Um, get it cut to size, cut it yourself to size, you know, depending on what you have for tools or what you, however you can tool it. Uh, and then give it a light sanding. Doesn't need to be too gritty, doesn't need to be too fine, probably something around, I don't know, uh, 220, uh, 500, somewhere in that range, just to give it a little bit of bite. But use a polycarbonate sheet if you're trying to print, we'll call it polycarbonate, on a non-high-end printer. It will help you dramatically. When I say that, do not use that sheet to print ABS because you will probably never get it off that sheet. Um, so, important there with what you're using. All right, back to settings. So, bed temperature, print temperature are the two major things. Uh, and then lastly, we already touched it a little bit, was brim. Now, one other thing that people will mention, people talk about specifically, and that is the uh, speed that you print at. Everybody tells you to go really slow. I haven't found that to be a good thing. Uh, I've found that the slower I go, the better chances I, uh, I have that my layers will delaminate uh, because there's too much cooling. Fans off completely on ABS and polycarbonate for me. Um, so keep that in mind if you're trying to print those plastics. Um, get back to that, the, let's see here what I have. Yeah, anyways, we're gonna talk about that quick, quickly. So um, I guess last and if not least, uh, is learn from your mistakes. Um, you know, try, test, tweak. Try it out. Like I said, do a test print, find out what you get out of it, and then tweak from there. 
adjust your temperatures. You know, three degrees, give or take, at a time. Um, don't make dramatic jumps and don't change multiple settings or try not to change multiple settings when you are tweaking. It'll make it more difficult for you to figure out what exactly you're doing and what exactly fix the problem that you're seeing. Um, again, delamination or warping, you probably have temperature issues. Um, it also could be speed issues. For me, if I see warping or major warping, um, I try to get my part to stick to the bed. Maybe I reduce um, or I overextrude my first layer. Uh, maybe I heat up my bed a little bit more. Maybe I'm using a different bed material. Maybe I uh, use an adhesive of some sort. Uh, if I have delamination, maybe I speed up my print, maybe I up my temperature on my hot end. Um, little things like that. Think about what you're doing. If you put a little thought into it, you do a little reading, you do some testing, you'll be able to do it. I can't guarantee it, but try it. So, I promised some destruction in this video. A um, little clickbaity there. So, what I got here in front of me are three small prints, PLA Plus, ABS, and polycarbonate. They're just quick prints, um, but they do have some, um, some, some shapes on there that I find interesting and possibly helpful for us to do the testing I want to do. Um, before I get too far into that, though, I will talk about the actual uh, filament itself, the looks of it. Uh, ABS filament. Nice and smooth, very smooth actually. Polycarbonate, at least from Gizmo Dorks, uh, is a little rough. It's got a little bit of a texture to it, um, but maybe slightly less flexible than the ABS, but not dramatically so. Uh, in terms of cutting, they seem to cut about the same. Um, let's try to get cutting here. Yeah, about the same. Um, polycarbonate is not scratch or cut proof. Um, pretty much the opposite of that. Uh, but it is impact greatly, greatly, greatly impact resistant and heat resistant too. So anything you want high temperature, polycarbonate is a great plastic to go with. So destruction time. All right, so I've got these cutters here, and we're going to cut our PLA plus and then our ABS. Actually, before we do that, let's try snapping off some of these, uh, these little wings here. So, I, I don't have any real test mechanism here, but I'm just going to try pushing them and see what we come up with here. That PLA Plus is actually pretty strong. Stronger than I thought it was going to be. Grabbing it. Come on. There we go. All right. So we got to snap on that. It's very strong, or stronger than I thought it was going to be. That one went a little bit easier. And that one went pretty easy, too. Um, but that's your PLA Plus. Pretty strong. I probably should have grabbed some vice grips or something to do this now that I'm getting into it. I hadn't done this before. Um, so ABS. By the way, these all printed the same settings. ABS actually, for this particular test, is breaking those off much easier than with the PLA Plus. Polycarbonate. Completely different way of breaking. I would say it's not quite as strong as that PLA plus in terms of that snapping, but what's happening there, and it could be my print, and it most definitely is my print, is my layers are not bonded as well. So on the PLA plus, you can see how that turned white. That's because the layers were bonded so well. On both the, well, the ABS is a turn a little bit white too, but um, basically you're getting clean. You can actually see the lines in here on where the delamination is happening. So on that particular test, the uh, PLA Plus was a little bit better. It was not as rigid as either of these two, uh, or actually it was about the same as the ABS, but not as rigid as the polycarbonate. Now that being said, I know for a fact that I can throw this, I can crush it, it will not break. Uh, ABS would be a little, uh, almost as good, not quite, but your polycarbonate 
I mean your uh, PLA plus is going to be nowhere near as good. Uh, let's get that cut. So cut through that. And not too bad, right? Pretty strong. ABS. Again, get some delamination there. Much harder to pull apart. About the same amount to cut it. There we go. A lot stronger than the PLA when it came to actually pulling it apart with force. Uh, the cutting was about the same, and of course we got more delamination with that. Uh, and if I was going to fix that, basically that'd be a heat thing. I would increase the temperature of the print head, and then our polycarbonate art. <clears throat> Having trouble on that one. <clears throat> nope. Um, I hurt myself trying to get through that one. Let me do this real quick. Let's go wide. Uh, let's. let's Let's go this camera real quick. Stand by. Move cam. All right, so let's take our move cam over to our little vice grip here that we got. And let's see what we get with this. We did cut three notches in that already, so it should be pretty weakened. But let's get that in there. And this isn't a big vice grip. Uh, I mean, a good uh, big press, but <clears throat> almost. <clears throat> All right, that's that's. I mean, I can't tell you how much actual pressure there is on that, but. That's pretty damn hard. And bring that back over here. Exact same piece we just had there with three cuts in it. And barely deformed. I can see some, some compression right there um, from where it was metal on it. But just for, for giggles here at this point, let's do this real quick. Let's bring this PLA plus. Put it in the same predicament. Yep, it's ripping right apart. Nowhere is near the same. So, yeah, so that's it. Some quick tips on how to print PC. Uh, a little bit of ABS mixed in there as well. Uh, a little bit about the products themselves. Um, for what it's worth, these are the guys that I've been printing with. Um, Esun filament for my uh, PLA Plus. Esun for my ABS Max. I can use this for the boron. And uh, videos on that if you want to look. And uh, Gizmo Dorks for the polycarbonate. And I do not believe this is a blend. I believe this is pretty, you know, pretty pure. I can't say any plastic's 100% pure, but. Um, they all seem to be good products. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Ring that bell so you get notifications when I put out videos, and I'll see you next time.